Hi, today on the show we're going to do an antler mount. Now sometimes you get a buck that's not big enough that you want a full shoulder mount on the wall. An antler mount is a nice alternative. And today I'm going to use uh, this set of horns. And what I also got is an antler mounting kit. You can buy these kits at the store. Uh, a number of outdoor retailers sell the whole kits, everything you need to put together an antler mount. You got the, the panel, then you have the, the little mounting form, which is what we're going to put the horns on. And once we have that, we're going to put the felt over top of the, this whole horns and form, and we're going to use this cord, braided cord, to wrap around the, the burrs of the antlers. Let's get started. Now first what we're going to do is we, got to, we have to drill holes into the horns so that we can screw it onto this foam form. After we've drilled our two holes using an eighth inch bit, we're going to countersink these holes with a wider bit. And what that will do is we'll allow the heads of our screws, whenever we're connecting the horns to the form, to actually sink in line with the skull plate. Okay, once we have our, our holes drilled, we're ready to attach it to the foam form. Now attaching it to the foam form is, is fairly simple. The main thing is that we want to line up the center of the skull plate with the center of the foam form. And also, we don't want to lift the horns up too high so that there's a, there will be a ridge. You want it as level as you can, even with the form. Okay, once we've put one screw through the horns, just to kind of hold it in place, you'll notice that our rack isn't very solid on there. So to really stabilize it, so we get a good view of how the rack is going to look on that form, I like to use just a little bit of clay. And what we're going to do is we're going to stuff that underneath the skull plate, and that'll give it a good base. Okay. All right, once we have our clay in there, then we can actually look and arrange our horns just by pressing the horns down into the clay so we get a good idea of how those horns are going to look on that form. All right, and that's about right, right there. And you'll notice on this form that I've tried to leave an equal amount of distance between the edge of the form and the antler, the bottom of the antler around the burrs. And what that's, that's going to do is make our rack you know, look as, as even as possible and show off the best qualities of it. And you'll also notice from the side that I've kind of angled the rack out a little bit. And that is so that when it's on the wall, it's, it's coming out and it's not flat back against the wall where you're going to lose some of the, some of the characteristics of the rack. Um, you're not going to see the, the back, the beams as well. You just you want the rack facing out just to give it as much emphasis as you can. Okay, once we have the rack uh, pretty much where we want it, we'll put the second screw in, and that will give it a, a good anchoring. You can also tighten down the first one if we have to. Yeah, make sure it's on there. Looks good. Now we are ready to use paper mache to cover up, basically fill in all these gaps around here to give it a nice smooth, smooth surface. All right, this paper mache actually came with the kit, so and that's what's nice about the kits is they do give you everything you need to know, to need to have to, to put together one of these mounts. Now the thing with paper mache is that you don't want to put too much water at first. We want to start out with a little bit and go from there and see how that works. And then we just start mixing it up. Okay, and basically what we're doing is we're filling in all those edges. Okay, once we have all our paper mache on there, what we want to do is take a popsicle stick and just kind of smooth it out. 
We want to make sure our form, once again, is in, in line with our skull plate so we don't have any ridges along there. We also want to smooth out along the back where the paper mache here and the, the foam form meet. We want to make that as smooth as possible, as even as possible. <coughs> okay, and once we've done that, we just got to let it dry for oh, usually a couple of hours. The mache doesn't take a whole long, whole lot of time to, uh, to set up, so whenever it's set up, we'll finish assembling it. Well, we're back an hour later, checking to make sure this is hard enough, and it is, all the paper mache. And as you can see, it's nice and smooth now, so whenever we put this, this piece of felt over top of it, we won't get any lumps. And basically, to put the felt over, is we want to center it. And then we want to staple down one side here. And all I'm using is a staple gun. Just to keep the felt in place. Then the first next step we want to do is wrap it around here pretty tight. Not real tight, just snug. Then we want to staple down the top. Okay. We want to staple around a few more, put them in there, make sure it's make sure it's on there solid. Now, once we have that, we have to cut the notches so that the felt will wrap around the horns. So just take a pair of scissors, and what you do is you'll cut the felt in line with the horns, in line with the horns all the way to the base. Once you do that, sometimes you have to cut out a little circle, just a little bit of a half moon, and that's actually where the, ant the horn's going to be. There's also the, the situation of what to do with this crease, um, because no matter what you do, you, there's going to be some little overlap there. And normally, I like to keep it so that it is in line with the burr of the antler. Because since the burr sticks out a little bit, it kind of shields that from view. Once we pull that back, you can see it's nice and straight going back. Let me just start pulling this little snug going around. All right, once we've completed one side, we just repeat the process with the other side. Okay, once we have all the felt on, the next step is to add the braid around the horns. And to do this, to do this use a hot glue gun. And I like to start in the back so that the when you wrap this around, the overlap will be sort of hidden. And once we have it completely around, we just cut off the end. And then make sure to glue that down pretty good. Okay, once we've finished putting the braid around the, the base of the antlers, all we have to do is connect this part to the plaque. Well, we finished our antler mount today, and I think it turned out pretty good. I'm anxious to get it on the wall. Next time you get a buck that you don't want to mount, uh, but you want the horns you know, in a place where they can be displayed, these kits make a wonderful alternative. So next time you get one, get a kit and have yourself some fun.